All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to find the general form of this hyperbola and sketch the graph. So all I do is I give you the vertex 0, 2, and 4, 2, and the foci of negative 1, 2, and 5, 2. All right, so from here, I'm just going to start sketching a graph and kind of see kind of what's going on and see what I actually have. So I have <coughs> vertices at 0, 2 and 4, 2. So this is 0, 2, this is 4, 2. I have a foci at negative 1, 2, negative 1, 2, and I have another foci at 5, 2, which that makes sense. They're an equal distance, so 5, 2. They're all on the same line. Um, this is a distance of 1, this is a distance of 1. I'm perfectly fine. All right. Now, the question becomes, um, how do I write this equation? Well, I need to know a point right here, smack dab in the middle between 0, 2, and 4, 2. Well, if you learn from ge remember from geometry, we have our midpoint formula. We're going to take the average of the x's and the average of the y's, and that'll be my midpoint. So I'm going to do 4 plus 0, which is 4, divided by 2 is 2. And 2 plus 2 is 4, divided by 2, which is 2. This is my HK, that, so this is now my center. Just by doing the midpoint formula from geometry, I can get my center really fast. Now, I know the hyperbola is opening this way, and I know it's opening this way. I need to know, I can find this distance here, that distance will be my C, and I can find this distance here, that distance is my A. The reason why I need these is because I need to get to my general form of, let's see this open left and right, so my x is first. I need to have my general form of x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. I need to have it written in this form. Well, I already have h and k. I can find my a from a distance. Well, what is the distance between 2, 2 and 4, 2? Well, that's going to be 2. Just by doing 4 minus 2, learning from geometry, that's an easy way to find the distance one on the same line. Or you can still use the distance formula from geometry. Now, for my C, it is my distance, so I can just count. Well, I know this space is 2, another 1, that's a 3, so my C is 3. You notice this formula doesn't have a C in it. But I do have a formula that say, states C squared equals A squared plus B squared. You notice this is B squared. So this is actually going to be fairly straightforward to find my b. What I'm going to do is I'll plug in my numbers. I've got 3 squared equals 2 squared plus b squared. This ends up being 9 minus 4, which gives me 5 equals b squared. Voila, I know what my b squared term is. Boom. All right. So now I can actually write my formula. My formula is going to be x minus my h, which is 2, squared over my a squared, well a is 2, 2 squared is 4, minus y minus my k, that is not a k, <laughs> that is not a 2, squared over, well b squared is 5, so I'm just going to write 5 and equals 1, I'm probably off the board, yes I am, but I wrote an equal 1 over there. Alright, so there's my formula. Now, let's talk about sketching, so I'm going to clean this up a little bit so I can sketch. Because if you notice, I was just doing everything from points and the idea of geometry. That's why these conics is in a lot of textbooks, in fact, almost every textbook I've ever seen is called analytical geometry. It's called analytical geometry. Now, there's a neat little trick because there are some asymptotes here. There are some slant asymptotes you're going to need to draw in to effectively draw this, to effectively draw this out, to sketch it out. So let me create a little bit more space here. I'm going to actually show you the way that I prefer to do this, the easier way, in my opinion, instead of actually coming up with equations of lines and actually trying to graph the lines. We're going to use a geometric shape to actually do this. There are two points, here and here. What this distance actually is, is going to be your b distance down to this point, which is what I found. This is b squared, so my b is actually square root of 5, and we have a plus or minus, which is going to make sense. So if I'm at this point right here and I go straight up, my x value is still 2. But my y value is going to be 2 plus the square root of 5. I want to come straight down. 
and this is going to be, my x value is still a 2, but now my y value is 2 minus the square root of 5. This is why we have a plus or minus. And then what we do is we just draw a rectangle through the vertices and those points. Once you do that, all you're going to do is you're going to go through the center roughly. This is just a sketch, so it does not have to be perfect. There is an asymptote. There is an asymptote. I'm not too worried about the equation of the lines. You go to your vertex. You stay inside your asymptotes. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is your sketch. And that's what I would be looking for. Now, if you gave me the equation to the line and plotted the lines, I'm perfectly fine with that if you're looking, if you're going and finding this at a different source. Um, I like doing the box. I'm trying to plot lines with graphs and trying to memorize the equations of how to find these asymptotes. It's just much easier to go down B and up B, draw a rectangle, and then just kind of do your diagonals. That works by far the best way sketching them by hand versus trying to come up with new the equations because there are equations for these that you can memorize and you would have equations and then it's just algebra and graphing lines or just do a plus and a minus your B, draw in your little rectangle and boom, you're done. Hi, I'm Mr. Buzzer and these videos are supplemental instruction for my students. If you found the video enjoyable, make sure you click the like button and click subscribe as well as the bell for notifications to receive future videos on high school mathematics.